If you're responsible for producing monthly reports with actuals, budgets, forecasts, variances, anything like that, then this video is going to save you an absolute ton of time. Wouldn't that be great for your feedback? So your boss has asked for this report. Effectively, it's a sales report. Wants it every single month and what's it basically by region and by product category. What's the actual budget and variance for the actual month? The same for the year to date. And then, you know, the balance of the budget remaining and how much that is per month. So you can see a comparison to how things have been going. Right. So you've got some data then. What do you got? Well, you've got your budget here and it's laid out by month. It's got the region and the product category because that's the level the budget's been set at. So that's good. And then you've got some actuals probably come from your order system by the look of it. Tons of data, loads of every single order, about 4,000. Right. How are you going to pull all this together in the most automated way possible? OK, I'm going to talk about three different ways of doing this, and I'm going to break it into three separate videos. So first off, I'm going to go through a function based method, which I think is way more efficient than what most people would be doing at the moment. So I'll talk about that. The next method I'm going through is a method using Power Query, which is pretty much fully automatic and you know, way, way better than using the functional method and it'll save you loads of time. And then a kind of icing on the cake method where we're going to take that a step further and use the data model to create like the entire reports on the fly with pivot tables and pivot reports, which will open up a whole array of new features and new analysis that we can also do. OK, so before we go on, what is wrong with just putting in the traditional formulas, you know, maybe a few sort of sum ifs and things like that. And then, you know, next month, it's just a case of like a few formula changes, a few checks and stuff. It's fine, isn't it? There's a few major issues with that. Even with the method I'm going to talk you through, which I think is a very efficient way of doing that, you still got a risk of formula errors. Anyone using the spreadsheet as well, if you, you know, you're on holiday or you you leave the company, even anything like that. It's going to be difficult for people to pick it up. They need reasonable Excel skills to do with it. Any kind of new data categories coming in and stuff like that, it's all going to fall to pieces. That said, tables and functions are still a far better way than going in and literally just trying to, you know, crowbar in some sort of sum of formulas here where you're literally trying to pick up data from here manually, scrolling down thousands of lines at a time. Right, so I've got a process here and you can download this spreadsheet and it will be everything could be complete and you can work through it as you go. So first things first, we need to change our data into tables. Now, the reason why we want to do this is because it's going to make all of our functions and formulas so much easier to build and they will update automatically with new data, which I'll demonstrate as well. So this is the key benefit really of using tables over you know a standard sort of functions approach click anywhere on this data presuming it you know if we assume that it's all kind of together and stuff like that we can click on Control t it will say yes that looks like at the area i want and notice how it's missed the totals off which is great because we wouldn't want those included it's got headers that's fine we click ok and it's put some filters on which i'm just going to take off so that we can see our headers properly and I use the control shift L to do that. Our data is in a table. We no longer need these on the bottom. And one of the things that we want to do if we move to the table design menu is give it a decent name. So at the moment it's called it table three. You can see up here. Now I start all my tables with TBL. And the reason for that is as you type formulas in a formula bar or wherever in the cells, when you put equals T, you'll automatically get all the tables appear in a list for you, which I'll can demonstrate in a minute but we'll call this budget tbl budget and then we'll do the same thing on here so i'll do control t for that okay go to there call that tbl actuals so we've got that set up we want to know essentially the 
actuals for the month, the budget for the month, and a year-to-date budget and the balance budget, it's going to be a bit annoying if we have to constantly update our formulas on the report. So for example, this may be May, so I could point that at the May column, but I'd have to update the formula there, and I'd also have to update it there. And then on year to date, I'd have to update it there and there. And then the balance is obviously going to be, you know, another formula that we want to change, right, each month. So rather than do that, I suggest that we make a small addition to this table now we've got it. So the first thing we do is we put a column called month. Essentially, I'm just going to link that to May because it's May at the moment. Now we could get clever with an offset function and things like that, but I'm keeping it simple, right? It's May. Now I'm just going to make that a different color so we can tell this is a formula that I've added onto the data, right? I'm now going to make another column called year to date. And I'm just going to make that the sum of up to May. And that's going to go down. And then I'm going to create another column called balance, which also make dark color there. And that is just going to be this total minus the year to date. So I've got those set up. So now on my budget formulas here, I can literally point them at a column on the budget sheet, which is the month, the year to date or the balance. And every single month, I could basically change these formulas. So that I can just say, no, I don't want it to be May. I want it to be June and it will shoot straight down the table. And you don't need to change the formula then on your report. Because I'm a firm believer in um, keeping report data static and having as little sort of manipulation that needs to be done on the output pages of Excel spreadsheets as possible. It saves a lot of time and it saves a lot of errors too. So let's just change that back to May. So we set up our budget. What about our actuals? Well, the problem we've got here is that we've not got sort of columns or anything like that. And um, we've not got kind of year to date information or anything. Having said that, the the whole thing is year to date because we're obviously just going to put more and more data on as we go. So, you know, we don't need you know the sum total of the order value column, for example, is our effectively our year to date. So all we need to do is identify the month. Now there's various ways we could do this, but I suggest that we add a column called month for now. Again, I'll just make that a different color. Again, I'm just going to remove the filter buttons just to make our headers clear at the moment. And I'm going to use the month function to give me a month number from the order date. So we've got one and as you go down, you'll see we're going to change. I mean, there's so much data on here, but you can see it's changing, it's going up. Now that's going to give me a way then of picking up which month we're in and I can do that I can have like a little helper cell here let's put one here right so I'll just call this a uh, helper but you would call it say month or something like that and we'll just put it we'll put a five in there and now we can say that we want to do a kind of sum if formula looking for the sum of where it equals five and for the year to date, we're just picking up everything anyway. So that's the kind of setup, if you like, that I think we should be doing to make our life easier using standard functions. OK, so setup's done. It's just now about creating the report. So really, it's all going to be some if type functions. And because we've used tables now, it's going to make our lives way, way easier with these formulas because we'll be able to kind of create one and then edit it ever so slightly as we move between month and year to date and balance and stuff and between product category and region. First function then, right. Some ifs. Now our sum range, so we're going to do the actuals first. Now the sum range is always going to be this order value. Now you could hover over that and click on there, example, and that will create you know, the table name and order value. Or you could just click anywhere in that column and hit control space. And that will also basically give you the entire column in, in a formula. So that's what we're always going to sum. So that's no problem. Now, what's our criteria? Well, 
we're talking, we're in the region section of the report. So I'm just going to click anywhere in the region column and hit control space. So we say we're going to look at the region and we want to filter effectively like only some if the region is the same as what it is on report. So the actual criteria will be the um, report region. Now, what I want to do is uh, I'm just going to hit F4 and fix that so that dollar signs in front of the B, but not the row number, obviously. And that way we're just fixing the column so that when we copy and paste this formula around, we're always looking at column B. OK, so that on its own, if we just hit enter there, will give us the total actual. So effectively, that is our year to date formula, in fact. So I'm just going to put that one over there because that is our year to date formula. There's no filtering by month. To make the month formula, all we need to do is add a second criteria, which is that the month, our new month column, is the same as the one in our helper there. Now that one we need to fix entirely because we're only going to have that. It's only going to be one number for the whole report. So that is our value there. If we wanted to know, for example, we could just change our month here. So that formula, we can go down to there. Now I've obviously put a, I've put some formula on there already, but we can just copy and paste that one down and we can copy and paste that one down. I would recommend actually putting sort of checks and balances onto a report like this, but I'm not going to go through that. I just want to tell you about the main method. The beauty of this is that because we've all set up in tables, if I copy and paste that formula down there, obviously it's going to, we're not going to have you know, anything sensible because it's checking the region. But where it says the word region, if I just put P for product category, you can see we get a little drop down list and using the arrow keys or the mouse, I could change that to say product category. I could again hit tab or I could click use the mouse, hit enter. And that is our formula changed for product category. And I can basically paste that one down. And as long as that and that are the same, you know that we're on a to a winner. I could do exactly the same with the year to date formula. So I go to F2 to change that, move to here, product category. And there we go. So these are our actual cost done. All right, budget, very similar. Um, so we'll do our sum ifs again. This time though, our sum range is going to be, in this case, the month, because we're in the month section. And now we just need to check for our region. So it's going to be uh, region is equal to, on the report, the region there. So we'll just fix that column again. And that should give us our budget for the region. Now, when it comes to year to date on this one, though, um, we could copy that same formula and where it says month, because our year to date is a separate column, just type the first letter Y, hit tab. We now have our um, budget for the year to date. And then we've got one more this time because we've got our balance as well. So this time we're going to go in here and where it says year to date, we're just going to put B. And it's going to say balance, hit tab again, enter. And there we go, right? So we've quickly set up these formulas. Next then, we'll just copy these down to here. But this time, instead of region, similar kind of thing, product category, copy and paste all of that down. Take our year to date one again. Budget there, change that to product category, copy and paste that one down. And that is essentially good to go for that. And then lastly, but not least, the balance, which we'll change again to, we need to change the region to um, product category again. Let's check everything is looking equal. Yeah, again, as I say, I would put some check formulas in here. 
And then, in order to do the variances, we're just going to do one minus the other, of course, which is straightforward enough. And that formula there, put in there. And then this one we'll need to put in there. And then the per month is going to be, is that balance divided by 12 months minus whichever one we're currently on, like that. So that is our remainder per month. And there we go. We now have our report for May. If we put in more data, which I'll just do now. So let's add in some data for June and July. So I'm going to add all of this onto the actual sheet here. Paste it on the bottom. And then I'm going to go to my budget sheet. And this one, I just need to say we've now got to July. Our year to date is also July. And then we go to our report and we change that to say July. And everything has moved apart from the name on the report, which for now, I'm just going to say July. OK, so pretty minimal effort in terms of a monthly update there. Um, compared to moving around formulas on the report sheet. I hope you found that useful, but trust me, this is nothing compared to what's coming up in part two of this video when I talk you through how to achieve a similar result with Power Query and we'll be down to literally typing a number and hitting refresh.